Alrighty, uh, we are doing our EKG mini series. Mm-hmm. We had some technical issues. We, I, I messed up. I deleted the last video that we made. He really deleted. He said it could be better, which is probably not a lie. The other thing is, is that we changed the way the content of the web pages. So now it's, it's better. I think it's good for good for our next edition. So if you will, I think so. Uh, it kind of matches like a. I don't know, a quote-unquote learning management system. That's what we tried to go with. Mm-hmm. Instead of like typical YouTube or we were posting the videos and we just wanted the people to see. That's all we really, really want right, anyway. Right, yeah. But if we're, if we're going to attempt to try to give people continuing education credit, we should be able to generate a certificate right away. We should be able, they should be able to go back to that course. They should be able to go back to their certificate, print it off, and you can do all that now. Yeah, it's good. All That's you gotta good. do is, you know, create an account. You yep. just gotta remember your, uh, you gotta, you gotta five hundred rem- passwords. Yeah, you gotta remember your password. You'll log. Uh, so far, I've logged in one time, and I haven't had to re-log in. No, good. Like okay. so, it, it keeps that. So uh, you, unless you actually log out, and then on the left side, we'll really talk about the on the left side when you log in, you'll see the, your name. And that's what's going to be printed on your certificate. Cool. So you want to make sure that you didn't put something like One-Eyed Cat Lady or something like that on there. That oh, no, you definitely want to put One-Eyed Cat Lady. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's, no, what, let's, let's have that's it. what the state... It bombs away. It, that's what the state uh, knows you as. That's, and I'm glad. I'm glad they don't have to know my password. My password is obscene. It's yes. been obscene for years. Well, I know it because uh, I helped <clears throat> right. you with your registry. Um, by the way, congratulations on getting certified... Or, Recertified your EMT. Yeah, I am. I, I I still have no earthly idea how to how to be an EMT, but you know, I, I know that you can't connect an oxygen regulator standing up. It has to be laying down because it can explode. I know a lot of weird things. Why are you? Why did you go get your EMT? Just because I wanted to to see what it was like, uh, like what kind of training people had that I was like overseeing. I actually was supposed to get my paramedic, but now I've been. Too involved in the rest of my life, but I'm hopefully someday I'll come back. Circle back. Yeah, it around. takes me about ten minutes to read your email signature. Yeah, it takes longer to read your email signature. You know what's interesting email. about that is I, I have a I have a really supportive boss, and uh, one time I actually emailed him something, and he actually he must have been bored. I guess uh, he took the time to correct it, my email signature and send me a version back that he'd rather have it be. I'm proud of you. So now I just I I, I accepted that. He even put the pronouns in there. Nice. Her, she, or something. Uh, no, I was like, okay. So. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very proud of you. Oh, thank you. I'm very thank proud you. of yep. your accomplishments. Yeah, it, it took a lot of work on foam frat and uh, <laughs> and twenty five dollars. Yeah, you gotta pay yeah. the, and then you gotta fill out the survey now at the end. Yeah, I, I'm thankful that this year I'm not due for the state because I really hate doing that fingerprint thing. Oh, because there's like 400 people in there every time I go there, even if you make an appointment. Yeah, I had to do both this this time around. And that lady, well, it's usually a lady in there. <clears throat> I think she just hates everyone, so. so anyway. Rehash what we said. New format. Remember your password. You can look at your transcript on the left-hand side. You can also see that if you have classes that are in progress, you could go back to them. And it should take you back to, I think, where kind of where you started. Stop. Left off, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I do think that if your computer, you know, has the cookies enabled and things like that, uh, you, you're able to do that. So let us know how. Uh, a lot of people have said they like this format. I want you guys to get something out of it besides just listening. Right. And we did go ahead and um, book this podcast room in the med school and this time did not use the lights because it looked like I needed a few pints of blood last time. Yeah, uh, that's what you said. I, I thought you looked great, just like today. Yeah, you're sweet, but those those lights, man, they made me look like a hemoglobin of five. It's bad. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, carry also, on. Also, <clears throat> one more thing uh, you just found out about, we're going to look at doing some shirts. Yeah, some merchandise that's kind of theme-based, which is very interesting. Yeah, I, didn't, I, don't, I'm, I still don't know how I'm gauging how you feel about it, but we can talk about that, I guess, off the air. Sure. I th- I feel okay about it. But Surprise. Sure. All right. Today, atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. We'll, uh, we, I wanted to kind of redo that. Uh, definition of atrial fibrillation, when you look at it on the EKG, is you look at it, it's irregular, and you no discernible P wave. It's got all that 
defibrillatory, like almost kind of like artifacty things before the QRS. So you, you, you start to suspect this patient has a history of AFib. Uh, or not. Or, yeah. Or, or not. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. So, um, and most of the time, though, pre hospital, you get out with them. They're like, yeah, I do. I got AFib. You know, I, yeah, yeah. You, you rarely get called for the, for the new onset. <laughs> or you find it like secondary to something else. You're out there for sepsis and then you get like sidetracked by this AFib because then you're like, well, and, and actually people, and I just reviewed a case yesterday, people really get hyper focused on that rate and that rhythm. They get like very down that pathway and they're like a lot of the time those AFib with RVR and stuff is a reaction to something else. Illness, dehydration, electrolyte abnormalities. I mean, just a thousand things. So you see a lot of folks <clears throat> going to, like, some kind of calcium channel blocker, like diltiazem and not treating the underlying causes. Right. I mean, you know, are, are they just hypotensive a little bit because of their rate, or they're hypotensive because they have a UTI and they're septic, right? It's, so it's hard to find, though, pre-hospital. You guys right. got all that equipment, you know, and you can yeah. look at all those labs. But, you know, the only thing we have is an assessment. Right, and the you know, thermometer. That's, yeah, that's all that we... That could actually yeah. be helpful to you. Yeah, yeah, if it works. Oh, well, that's fair. Um, but yeah, anyway, FIB, I agree with you, looks like artifact most of the time, but it's irregular. Um, it usually, uh, people do know that they have it most of the time. Um, they actually use a score called the Chad's VAS score. You guys wouldn't know about that pre-hospital, but Never it's actually... Never heard of her. <laughs> it's actually what we calculate to figure out if Sorry. somebody needs to be on a thinner. Oh, Okay. Right, because some people aren't, and you're like, well, why aren't you? And they're on, only on a baby aspirin, whereas somebody else is on eloquence. Well, why? And then it's actually a whole bunch of different factors we can pull it up and just show, just to reference it, um, what we use to calculate that. Um, Would I you say Chad S? <clears throat> yeah. It's like B A. Yeah, it, it's B? suited to type in C H A D S, and then it should be come up with Chad's vast B or, with an ask? Yeah, you're going to, yeah. Oh, ask. Ask. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I'm looking at it. Keep going. I'm sorry. So... What do you think, besides not forgetting that there's there's usually an underlying problem, there could just be runaway AFib. A lot of people, when they go in it, can tell you when they go in it that are pretty savvy about it and have had it for a while. What is your go-to medicine for treating, let's say we are going to treat the actual FIB? Uh, Diltizen. Yeah, me too. I'm a cardizen person also, but I just... I don't, I, I don't treat it, though. Rarely. Yeah, unless it's like they're unstable or something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think pre-hospital, uh, we we have all these medications to treat things, but is it appropriate pre-hospital? Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, like, does it urgently need to be treated? Right. Like, right then. Right. Sometimes uh, a patient feels pretty bad, and right. then you have to kind of want to step in and do something. Typically, though, when, when I see, you know, the rate that, and it's bouncing around 120 to 160, typically... I'm, I'm usually always there for something completely different. She bumped her toe. She fell out of bed. And now she, uh, right. I see her and she has AFib. And some people can tell you, like, I'm always an AFib, and yeah, like I'm around 110 all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough because you get, you know, varying amounts of experience, and, and people see that tick along up to 150, and they think right away, you know, hey, yeah, this is concerning. But does the patient have symptoms? Right. Uh, that's one thing I'm always, you know. Yeah, that's like, real. That's, that's reasonable. And I don't want to do a lot of fluid, too, because we're already, the intrinsic rate's always so high. Unless you're you know? treating something else. Right. It, just like what you said. You do Sepsis a good assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, besides anything else that we can mention that might help people, you know, identify things a little bit more on the FIB side, when it gets pretty, pretty fast, it can be you know, obviously a little tougher to see those fibrillatory waves. Yeah. Um, sometimes you might have to slow it down just a little bit to even be able to identify. Think about the first time that I treated uh, neurocomplex tachycardia with medication. Not cardioversion, obviously, but with medication. I think about, um, I misinterpreted it. I thought it was uh, going to be, I thought it was like SVT. Um, or, yeah. And then... I, I slowed it down, yeah. and it, like with some adenosine, and we ended up uh, seeing, oh, this is irregular, this AFib. So then we changed our treatment plan, went to cardizum. 
So there's other other meds you can use too, metoprolol being another one that people like to use, and and a lot of people are on that at home, and so there's some school of thought to just continue what people are on at home, but in the IV dose. Right. And so that does work sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get into like a whole another subset of things, like if those were not on the table, and I think it was like we, we had a shortage of diltiazem for a while, so we were using like mm -hmm. rapamil or something for a while. Um, and then there was also um, what I saw recently in the in the in the ER side was a uh, seems to be an uptick of flecainide being given again. Like that was in vogue when I was a resident, and then I haven't seen what much that? of it. That's also for AFib, and it's also a rhythm uh, an arrhythmic um, medication. Except I when I talked to the cardiologist about it because I said. I'm seeing all these young people, younger people on flecainide. Why are they on flecainide? And he said, with non-valvular AFib, that's a, a reasonable treatment as well. I, I did see some torsades when I was a resident when people were on flecainide. And so I, I do think there's some risk there. Um, but I, I saw a great deal of them recently. So I don't know if we have a new provider that likes flecainide or what. But anyway... Uh, did you stop find that Chad's Vascor? I did. It, it mm. was basically, it was just something where it went through. It a bunch of things. talked about the age at first, talked right. about sex, and then you just kind of clicked it, and then I guess eventually it kind of gave that to you. Yeah. 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 Neat. I like that. Then I went on to another um, atrial arrhythmia that we'll be talking about today, <clears throat> atrial flutter. Uh, atrial flutter, a little bit easier to identify, I think, uh, you know, because it has... The jaw tooth appearance, mm -hmm. the one that you know is so distinct that everybody looks for, and when we look, when we think about atrial flutter, the biggest thing besides distinguishing it is figuring out the ratio of two to one versus three to one, and, all and that. two to one. And what does that look mean? Fairly regular, actually. Yeah, it's very well, interesting. Well, flutter, flutter is typically regular. Yeah, but it it can be difficult. Like some people will say, "Oh, this looks like sinus tack." It, it can be very difficult. On a two to one? When yeah, it, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So three to mm -hmm. one, four to one, so those are the ones that are textbook that right. we pick those that out. Right, little sharp tooth. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would be one of our things to do again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a jaw. I don't know where this thing goes sometimes. I don't either. Uh, but uh, yeah, talk about flutter. What is, why, okay, well, when we talk about conduction ratios, are those relative in the field? Should, if we see three to one versus four to one versus two to one, does that mean anything to us when it comes to our patient? Well, it may. And it may only because, like, if you have a two to one and you're getting, like, let's say, I don't know, 150, 160 beats a minute, 100, you know, and it's, you know, if it's four to one and you're only getting a ventricular contraction every four, that actually may be relevant in the field. I mean, it may be hypotensive, bradycardic, technically. Your monitor may be misreading a lot of things. You still want the calcium channel blocker to treat that, right? No. Though? Well. Or no? Not necessarily. What it's do you a, want? Beta I blocker? I mean, it's, it's fine to give something or nothing. It's just yeah. fine to note it. Yeah, you got to. Well, and But the biggest thing that I think that you mentioned, that one thing that we don't do as well as we probably should, is treating underlying causes. And the reason that you guys find them in the hospital, I'm just going to be honest and blunt with you. Assessment is part of it, but you got way more equipment than we got. Sure. We have but some like, great paramedics in this area that do a jam up assessment that, you know, I would have missed it too, you know. I, I, it, right. But it's just the fact of, you know, we do everything we can pre hospital, but the fact that we rely on our hands, our eyes, our monitor, our thermometer, the mm -hmm. basic things is what we have, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, rare, you, I mean, it's rare to find pre hospital systems, you know, with. The equipment like an iStat or something like that that's going to give you guys a lot more information right right uh i thought i think it's really good by the way atrial flutter did you sleep well last night or something why because this is good for you this is really good gave some great information on fib and atrial flutter i mean i did sleep some but i, I slept good yeah did, are you going to show pictures of fib and flutter mm -hmm. oh yeah okay. yeah well uh i just have this here and then we'll put those, obviously, on the screen. Do you think you can explain why <clears throat> people are such a high stroke risk and other strokes? Let me explain. Not just brain strokes, but um, we see people with mesenteric ischemia and, um, you know, strokes to their abdomen, strokes to their kidneys and all kinds of stuff when they're in flutter do you know, or fib. Do you know why? Uh, no, I don't for sure know the answer. I'm going to take a stab at what I think. 
please take a stab. Okay. Stat. So when we think about fib, you know, you think about what the what that chamber of the heart is doing. You know, what that chamber of the heart is doing. You right. you can you can purely say that it is, you know, obviously that unorganized fibrillatory and it's just kind of, you know, quivering mm-hmm. there, right? Yeah. So obviously the ability because it's quivering, it has it doesn't pump the blood out as well. That's right. Which it's it makes it this. yeah, which makes a little bit left <laughs> back. So then it clots and then it eventually goes that's just my. That's just. That's my. exactly it. So it's not like a well oiled machine. It just kind of sits there and coagulates, if you will, and then it sheds little clots all over. That's why it's a risk. I love when you put me on the spot like that. Do you? Especially if I get close. You get close <laughs> to what's actually going on. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Sweet. We go ahead and finish this uh, part up, and when we come back, we'll be talking about. Uh, the wild card. The wild card. It's going to be fun. It, the wild card is going to be fun.